Hey everyone, well in this week we are painting marigolds in our garden series. We have a bunch of marigolds all throughout the garden. They're supposed to bring in the butterflies and the ladybugs and they're such happy flowers. So pull out all of your yellows. We're gonna paint these beautiful flowers. Just a simple sketch, it's gonna be so fun. Hey everyone, well welcome back to this week's garden collection series. We are painting marigolds today. I absolutely love marigolds and my mom has a bunch of them planted in the garden. They're supposed to be really good for attracting um, butterflies and ladybugs and then helping keep other bugs out. So we're gonna paint some marigolds. I have done a quick sketch here. Uh, marigolds are really interesting flowers. They're very um, chaotic a bit, I guess you could say, both in their leaf structure and then their petals. Lots and lots of just curly, curvy lines. So we are gonna try our best to do lots of yellow, create these big flowers as well as a lot of stems. They really get prolific in the garden. Now I will say to create some of the shadowing, we are going to be doing, uh, using some other colors um, to create those shadows, spe shadows, specifically a purple. Now if you have your own purple, use that, but we have been using a purple created by the colors of the thalo blue and some cadmium red. And so that purple, ends up like this and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of that purple and I'm going to blend it with some of my yellow and I just want to show you what that looks like and so you see it just creates some shadowing so we're going to be adding some of this purple into some of the yellow and that is going to help our shadows I know those are those are opposite on the color wheel I think they're opposite they're complementary, so they're very good for shadowing. And again, I'm just gonna show you that. Depending, you may need to add a little bit more blue to your mix. The other thing is, for example, if you are like, gosh, I don't wanna have to do all that mixing, grab your dioxazine purple, which is what this cup, this is what dioxazine looks like. It's a brighter, um, it's a warmer, to a certain extent, spring yet purple. And I'm going to mix that with a bit of the yellow and then you can see the difference the shade that you get when you do that so decide what you like um, again we're going to be using some of that red in our background and that's why I wanted to use our own purple that we're going to make but know that you have options here so do use whatever you have and make it as complicated or as simple as you want but ideally it's not too complicated right okay so now that we've got that going let's go ahead and start painting our are lovely marigolds. So what I'm gonna actually start off is I'm gonna lay down some yellow and I have gamboge, I have yellow cadmium, I have light hue and medium hue, I even have lemon yellow. Whatever yellows you have, mix them up. I am gonna go ahead and then I'm gonna start layering almost kind of like a rose. If you painted a rose with us, we were doing that back in January. I We're gonna kind of go like that except um, these petals are, like I said, lots of curves. So you can see I've done a pencil outline. I will most likely be coming back. I will erase all that. I knew for this one I was gonna have to go in layers though. I was not gonna get all of this done in one sitting. So um, I'm gonna grab even a smaller brush now too. You'll notice too, at least in the garden, the marigolds get very prolific. And you have the marigolds that also start popping out, the petals start popping out of those stems. And the stems are long. They're really long. You can even see the marigolds start to pop out at the very, very top. These are the fresh ones. They're like the baby marigolds. They're not quite out yet. I am gonna take, you can even take, if you wanted to, a little bit of gamboge or that orange, just a hint and lay that in there too. Just to give you um, some depth of color. And I'm gonna come back in here. So you can see here, I'm gonna just, I'm moving that around. I've got another one up here. Remember to have an odd number of color, uh, flowers. So no matter how many flowers you're doing, just make sure that there's an odd number. And I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I actually have an even number. So what am I gonna do about that? I'm gonna go ahead and add in, where's my pencil? There's the pencil. We're gonna add in another one and maybe we'll go right. They were all bending kind of this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, I do have eight. So maybe we'll do one more. And I think they're, what they, I often notice that they, they're doing is they're looking up towards the sun. Whatever direction the sun is going, they are kind of like their sunflowers looking up. Now remember too, if you've noticed, the marigolds are very interesting in that they have almost this vase-like um, 
direction, the shape that they're in. They kind of curve in at the in middle and then come back out. But they're pretty narrow as they're expanding out, almost as if all these flowers are going to just explode. So I'm going to go ahead, we'll do a ninth bloom right up here. Now I'm going to go ahead and rinse that out. I'm actually going to grab a little bit of that purple. And I'm going to add a little bit more, mix up some purple again, and get my colors all situated, add them to the yellow. So I get a little bit of a darker color, and I'm going to go ahead and start adding in some of this darker color. And again, it's not purple. You're adding purple to the yellow to create a depth, a different depth, right? We're creating some shadowing. So wherever you're seeing shadows on your picture of marigolds. And for here too, because this, this particular flower is hidden a bit away from the sun, there's going to be some more shadowing. Okay, so I'm just again laying that down. I'm going to take the darker color now too, and I'm at the end going to make little, all these little curves, lots and lots of curves. The marigold is just such a happy flower, right? It does so well. So again, I'm in Northern California. We have just had rows upon rows of really, really hot days of just triple digit. It wasn't triple digit. I think it was 99. I think I got, got to 100 yesterday. But my sister and I, um, the younger sister and I were out doing errands and we were just dying. Like it was just so hot to the point too where the car cannot even cool down because the car engine is so hot. We finally found a really nice shady spot in the very back of a parking lot. But that's in, that's California. You, you don't mind walking farther if that means that your car can rest in the shade so you at least get the benefit of AC when you get back in. Okay, so let's go back in now. I'm gonna grab that yellow and lay in some brighter colors. If you want to grab some lemon yellow, lemon yellow is going to do really, really nicely because marigolds are such happy, happy flowers. And if you felt too like maybe you got too much purple in, like you're like, hmm, I just feel like that's too dark, feel free to, you know, mop it up a bit. Take your paper towel, and I don't, I think I have a paper towel somewhere. I was going to paint later, but I don't know. It just like, sometimes you have to paint when the inspiration hits, and a lot of times it doesn't hit, I just do it, but when it does hit, and I'm like, you know what, the lighting's right, it's quiet this morning, just feeling like that desire to paint, I've got to make sure not to dip my my um, water, into my water, my paintbrush in, into the coffee, I have the coffee in the corner over here. Okay, so I am going to grab the Hooker's Green, because it's a nice bold green, permanent green will look nicely too, and I am going to start adding some of my leaves. Now you'll notice marigold leaves are a little bit, again, they're kind of chaotic too. There's almost like lots of fingers pointing out on the leaves. So it's really quite the, it's really quite the convoluted mass of greenery when we're painting marigolds. I'm going to come up here. Some of those stems, they just are a lot. There's a lot of energy with marigolds. There's a lot happening, but I am going to probably come back with a lighter yellow and add in some other things. Also, I saw a lot of dirt because they were kind of low to the ground and it is the garden, so I'm going to put in brown in the bottom, but I wanted to let that yellow dry just a bit. And we're going to come back and add some more yellow. I'm coming up here again, those finger leaves. I didn't do all of them because it was almost just a mass of green. And so I thought, okay, how am I going to create this? I am going to say though, we are going to add some of that phthalo blue part of our purple, and we're going to add some into the green and create that darker area because all in here, for example, we have a lot of leaves and there's a lot of depth because in my mom's garden, we actually have a tomato plant that's right over here. So that tomato plant is actually offering some shade. And that is, of course, casting a lot of shadows, right? All right, so we got some more leaves going on here. I could probably use a bigger brush as well. I don't even quite know where the stock is, where this flower starts, because it has just been blooming and blooming and blooming. And I didn't even want to do all the pencil sketch in all the pencil, uh, sketch in with pencil all the leaves because I knew it was just going to be a mass. So I am just, again, those nice leaves that are just coming out everywhere and adding a little bit darker up here, down here. And in this particular 
plant, I believe it really it's it's the, the stems coming down here. So we're going to even add some more leaves down here. And I know if you notice in your garden, where we are getting at right now is that everything is getting so thick you can hardly tell where the original stem is, right? Like the zucchini stalks are just growing upon growing upon growing with all their vines. The pumpkins have gone absolutely wild. We're going to paint some pumpkins too. And my oh my, they have gone absolutely wild with their growth. Okay, I'm going to add some phthalo blue to my green. So just for the sake of showing colors here, there's my green. That's the hooker's green. If I'm no, actually this might be, I think this is the permanent green. Forgive me. That's a permanent green. I'm going to grab some phthalo blue. I'm going to mix it with the green and then you're going to see it just gets, it gets darker, right? If I wanted to do a little bit more of my phthalo blue with the green, I have to be careful sometimes, but then again, a little bit darker. So again, I'm going to come back over here now and just add in not tons, but I'm going to just dip, dip that in. I don't want it to look, it almost, phthalo blue can have a bit of a turquoise color almost when it's mixed with other greens. Sometimes if you have some hooker's green, add that into it as well. That'll actually keep a nice, a nice blend of different color greens. Dip it into the, the tops of these guys too. Again, we're just, let some white show. We don't want to color everything in. and soup over here. Okay, this is looking nice. Again, our beautiful marigolds, we're gonna have it going all the way down here. They're just sticking out everywhere, leaves everywhere, which we love. Okay, now that I have that original um, initial painting down, which is actually, this is coming out quite nicely. Go ahead and grab some brown. Now I have, on my brown, I have Burnt Sienna, which is one just one of my favorite browns. It's, it's light, it's not too dark. And so I'm actually gonna just do a little bit of a wash, just like we've been doing with some of our other paintings. And again, I'm not quite sure what we're gonna do with this collection. I might create them into a journal, and I might gift it to my mom. Her birthday is in September. She doesn't watch the YouTube videos, so I can feel pretty free about talking about it on here. But I might, um, since I've been painting basically her garden, I may gift these into a book, a journal book, and so that she has a memory of the garden that we planted, and she really has been tending all summer, and she has loved it. She said she's just loved tending the garden. So, okay, so again, just a little bit of brown. I'm gonna grab some water and just keep that really nice and loose. I don't want it too heavy. And then really what we have back here is we have the fence. So we have that reddish brown. So if you have any reddish brown from the previous weeks, you could even take some of that kind of faux purple and just mix some more red into it which is what I'm gonna do here. And then mix it in with the brown. And if you want to go ahead and mix it right over here, just to make sure it's not too red, it's not too, you know, just, it's nice to do it sometimes not, right, not on the, um, not directly on the palette. And because it's the fence, I'm actually going to create that sense of my lines here and I may come back and do something else with them but I'm really going to go pretty light but just adding in my fence right in here not feeling the need to go too far too deep or anything like that oh we got a little bit more purple on than I intended but that's actually okay I'll just wipe that off and then just add it in to the other colors so again we're giving that that sense of a fence back here right okay that's nice. Okay, not too much. Again, leaving some white. It's just a background kind of grounds everything together. Now, I'm gonna looking at my marigolds now. What I'm going to do, I'm gonna touch them. They're fairly dry. I'm gonna come back, rinse your water, your brush out really well if you're using it for other colors, especially the greens. We don't want greens in our yellows. Get a bunch of yellow on your your brush and just start adding in some more yellow where you want it to be brighter and happier. I you notice a little bit of green got over there. I'm not going to stress about that. I will take a dry brush and then just clean it out. 
just like that, not a big deal. And even clean up this little guy just a little bit. There we go. That is just fine. I'll probably take actually some of that darker green here and just put it in the base since we're here. All right, I'm gonna take a bit of that purple that I was using earlier, that purple I had mixed with the yellow, and add just a little bit in here into the center, and I think it has a bit more red in it. I'm not worried. You'll notice too, um, what I'm noticing, and that is this one up here almost looks more like a peony instead of a marigold. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to make all those little curvy lines, lots of curvy lines, even some of the, um, the little long tendrils that we see on marigolds, and I'm just going to stick those out there. It can be hard sometimes to create flowers that have lots of petals sticking out everywhere, but they all end up in a round shape, right? So we're really, again, making the most of what we have as we do these quick watercolor sketches, trying to make them look as curly as possible. And you're hoping to some of the other distinguishing characteristics, such as the leaves, will help us identify this as marigolds. They're not quite as marigoldy looking as I would like on the actual flowers, but it's not bad. It's not a bad quick sketch um, imitation here, replication. And I think what is really telling are the way the marigolds open. So these really do look like marigolds right in here, the baby marigolds, because that's very distinguishing characteristic of the marigolds. I'm actually gonna take the yellow and pull it all the way down to mix with this green, since it was a pretty light stem and move that down. If you want to take that yellow and move it down on some of your green, if it looks a little bit dark, it'll just add another shade of green and blend right in. I'm going to add in some more, just move it around the brush, creating, if you see where the paint has maybe um, kind of gotten soggy, right? It gets a little bit soggy sometimes, or it's kind of turned into um, just like a pond in an area. Just pull it out right over here. Remember too that the beauty of watercolor is that sense of movement and watercoloriness. I'm making up words now. Watercoloriness. Okay, and I'm gonna stick some leaves right out here. If you can, create on one side of the leaf a little bit heavier so you can see where the shadows are falling on the bottom. And if you feel too that, gosh, they all tend to, they're all looking kind of dark, you can come back, and I'm gonna pull it out in just a sec, I'm gonna do some extra leaves that I see over here. Come back, grab a yellow, and then just take your yellow and also move that, especially where you want some lighter colors. The colors will just blend together and you'll have a lighter green, you won't have a predominant yellow. And that looks really nice. Okay, you know what? We may not have to do, do this in layers at all. I think this is looking really nice. Now what I will say is I'm gonna come back I'll erase all the pencil marks once it's dry. I might do some splattering here because I see some areas where some splatters might be really, really fun. But for now, this is looking really nice and it's a beautiful addition. I'm gonna to have to be showing these all together. And if you've been painting with me, definitely look at them and look at just how beautiful of a collection that we're creating of our garden. This is so pretty and look, we did this in less than 20 minutes and this was a little bit more of a complex one. So. Well done. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have a garden uh, vegetable or flower that you want me to paint, feel free to throw it in there. I've got a few more that we're going to do, but we'd love to do some other ideas that you have. We've got eggplant coming up. We have pumpkin coming up. It's going to be an absolutely beautiful summer season. Okay, you guys, I will see you soon.